welcome. On behalf of the University of Cincinnati's Advanced Research Computing Center, my name is Matt, and this is the Intro to Linux command line tutorial video uh, intended for users unfamiliar with the command line uh, to have some basic commands available that they can use to interface with our HPC resources. Uh, so you can see that I've pulled up a command line interface here. Uh, on MacBook, this is, you can search for terminal. Uh, depending on your operating system, you could also search for console or shell to get something similar. Um, and the first command that we're going to do uh, is one that will log us onto the supercomputer here at University of Cincinnati. And that's done via SSH space your username at arc2, which is the name of the cluster, .uc .edu. Uh, and so basically what this does, this just allows us to remote access a machine. In this case, it's the cluster arc2. This assumes that you already have an account created. Uh, when I do this, it will prompt me for a password. So this is the password associated with my uc6 plus 2 username. And you can probably hear me typing, but you'll notice that there are no asterisks or anything. Uh, that's just because of a Linux feature, but it is accepting keystrokes. And by hitting Enter, you can see that I'm now logged on to the Arc2 system. We get a little welcome message. And you'll also notice that the hostname in my prompt has swapped from nothing and to Arc2. Uh, your prompt may look a little bit different depending on if you've messed around with your configuration on our cluster before, uh, but it should still say username at Arc2. The first command that we're going to do is called pwd. This stands for present working directory. And if I hit enter, it tells us where we are on the cluster. So in this case, I am in my home directory. Uh, and then this, of course, will be your username. I can then list the contents of that directory. Uh, and so mine, you can see I have various things already created here. Uh, if this is your first time on the cluster, this command won't return anything because you have a fresh home directory. Uh, also, directory and folder are interchangeable. Um, so if you're familiar with folders, you're familiar with directories. Um, the next thing that we might want to do if we're starting a new project is make a folder or a directory for that project. And that's done via mkdir, which is short for make directory. And then you give it the name of the folder or the directory that you want to create. Uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to call it tutorial. And so if I list the contents of my home directory again with ls, you can see this additional tutorial folder or directory has been created. And then maybe I want to move to it so I can start to do some things in my project space. That's done via cd, which stands for change directory, and then tutorial. And now when I have hit enter, you can see this additional bit of path is displayed to let me know that I'm now in the tutorial directory. Again, yours may look a little bit different, but it will still say the name of the directory that you've created there. And then obviously it's empty. If I try to list the contents, it returns nothing. If I want to go backwards, uh, there are two ways that I can do this. Going back one folder is cd for change directory, space, dot, dot. Um, so in general, one dot means the current directory that you're in. Two dots means one directory above where you are. And so indeed, this takes us back, and I can confirm that with pwd. You can see we're back in our home directory. Alternatively, if you want to go all the way back to home, which for us corresponds to just one level up, you can use cd without any arguments, and that will default return you to your home directory. Again, confirmed via pwd. If you want to remove a directory, you can use the command rmdir, which is remove directory, and then the name of the directory you want to remove. The directory does have to be empty. In this case, you'll have to have removed the files out of it beforehand. Uh, but then hitting enter, if I list the contents of home again, you'll see that it's missing. But for now, I want to remake it and then change to it. Confirm that it's there and empty. Very good. And so now maybe we want to create a file uh, for our project, whether it will be a bit of code or just a README, something like that. Um, we'll do this through the 
editor called vi, and so the command is vi space, and then the name of the file that you want to create. So in my case, I'll call it submit.batch. Um, you can name it whatever I would recommend if you're following along to use the same names just for clarity, uh, and also to use extensions that are useful to you. So .txt for text files maybe, or .exe for executables, whatever convention you want to use. Uh, this .batch you will see in a later video, it will be for a batch submission script. But if we hit enter now, you can see that in the bottom left, we have created a new file called submit.batch. And it's empty with the cursor at the top. And so by pushing the I key, this takes us into insert mode in VI. Uh, you can tell from the bottom left where it now says insert. And we can type things here. This allows us to, to input whatever we want into our file. Um, in this case, I have some predefined stuff that I want to use that I happen to have just copied already. Um, I'll give you a second to copy it down, or you can pause the video uh, if you want to replicate this submission script exactly. Um, the content right now is not important. It's discussed in a later video. Uh, and then the last line that I want to add this may be a, a directive that says Tell me hello world. And so when I'm done with this file, uh, I can simply hit escape to get out of insert mode. You'll see in the bottom left that insert is now gone. And I'm now in editor mode. Um, and then VI has many commands that are beyond the scope of this video uh, that you can use to manipulate your file effectively. Uh, but all we want to do right now is just save and quit the file. And so we do that by typing colon, which you can see brings up a prompt in the lower left then W for write, Q for quit, and then hit enter. And this takes us back to the command line. And so if we want to confirm that we've created this file, we can list the files in the directory again. And here it is, submit.batch. Another thing we might want to do is copy files. Um, that's achieved via the cp command. And then the name of the file that you want to copy, in this case, submit.batch and then the name of the file you want to create as the copy. So in this case, I'll call it submit.batch underscore copy. And then by executing this command and listing the contents of the directory again, you can see that we now have a new file called submitbatch.copy. And if I use VI to inspect it, it has the same content as the original file did. If I want to remove a file that I no longer need, I can do that via the rm command. So in this case, I'll delete the copy that I just made. And I do that via rm submit.batch underscore copy. Now by listing again, you can see that it's gone. Um, let me copy it one more time. So just as a shortcut, you can use the arrow keys to access old commands uh, in order. So I'm arrowing up and down right now. Let me go back to CP. I'll execute that again. We now have our copy back. If I want to move a file, I can do that as well with MV. So this would allow me to place it in a different directory. Uh, and I want to move it to, let's say, my home directory. So it will be the name of the file that I want to move and then the name of the place that I want to move it to. So in this case, it will be home, Dutra, and W. And now if I list one more time, you can see that it's gone. And if I change directory back to home by doing CD with no input, or with no extension, and then listing the contents, it sits right here under submit.batch underscore copy. Uh, I no longer need this file here though, so I'm gonna remove it one more time. to confirm that it's gone, I can ls one more time. Uh, and so that's uh, good enough to navigate the compute cluster and to create and manipulate files. Um, I hope that you have found this useful and I hope that you look for our next video, Intro to HPC, where we talk about actually submitting jobs to the cluster uh, via our Slurm scheduler. Until then, happy computing.